Good morning, people of the internet. Alzael here, patriarchal member 14977518, token division. So apparently, due to the hard work of the men's rights movement, my city of Edmonton has now been declared the worst city in Canada for women to live in. I'd like to thank the tireless work of the many he-man woman haters in MRM Edmonton for making this possible, with special thanks to Girl White's Watt for her devotion to serving her patriarchal overlords. The work that she has done alongside those of us here at the Bureau of Internalized Misogyny, Battery, and Oppression will ensure a strong patriarchy for decades to come. On the more serious note, though, I first became aware of this from an article recently written on Ravel that a friend on Twitter linked to me. In the article, an English professor from the University of Alberta, Juan Marcel Coastman, decries how a study done in April showed that Edmonton was the absolute worst city to be born a woman in. It's a study that comes from the Canadian Centre for Policy Awareness and their Index for Gender Equality, which proclaims as its title, the best and worst places to be a woman in Canada. So a study focused entirely on women is under the mantle of an Index for Gender Equality. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I suppose I could spend some time poking fun at the pointless conclusions of the study, but you can read it for yourself in the low bar. Before I go on though, there is at least one issue that I would like to point out. This study claims to not be trying to be a measure of the well-being of, woman, of women, only to being a study of the gaps in gender. Given this claim, I find the fact that it titles itself to be, to be about the best and worst places to be a woman misleading at best and prejudicial at worst. The facts cited in this study are merely comparisons of numbers between men and women, such as, you know, how they earn earn yearly, such as such as how much they earn yearly, and yes, you just knew the wage gap myth was going to factor in here somewhere. But, but with only those raw numbers to go on, it's hard to honestly state that women have it better or worse. A woman who is only working part time while she has a husband bringing home a full paycheck from the rigs isn't exactly bad off. It goes on to state that they wish to ensure that no one is denied the chance to thrive, even if they are born female, suggesting that these results are the result of simply being women, as opposed to any other factors. Even though we don't actually know why these numbers are the way they are, because, apparently, the people who did this study never actually bothered to ask. Though it claims to be about examining the differences in gender, I couldn't help but notice that under the section for Edmonton, where it addresses domestic abuse and other incidents of violence, it only mentions the total number of reports. No mention is given of male or female victims, despite the fact that they spell out the numbers and comparisons between men and women in every other set of statistics. My guess on this is because they simply didn't know, as from what I can tell, the Edmonton Police Service only records domestic violence and seems to not split them up in regards to the genders involved. Yet, despite the fact that they don't explicitly state that those numbers are only assumed to be women by them, and try to leave it gender neutral, it's pretty obvious from the charts that they did count the domestic violence numbers as being specifically all women being the victims. But, back to how the MRM has allegedly ruined my city for women. Cosman cites the start of the decline as being a result of the Don't Be That Guy campaign to which the MRM responded with their Don't Be That Girl campaign, wherein they suggested that getting dead drunk at a party and letting a bunch of guys mount you doesn't actually negate your will to choose just because you regret it in the morning. According to Cosman, these suggestions, quote, demonstrate the especially misogynistic rape apologist approach taken by Men's Rights Edmonton in championing men's interests. Another incident was the defacement of a single poster along Saskatchewan Drive, which prompted one resident to contact the city councillors and the mayor to demand to know what they were going to do about this horrible act of someone defacing a single feminist poster with red paint. For some strange reason, the mayor and city council didn't seem to give much of a fuck, which seems to spectacularly astound the lady who made the claim, saying, quote, I fail to understand how you can see the images that were being graffitied, that continue to be graffitied in Edmonton, 
of that fucking night and not think to yourself, oh, this originated in a violent misogynistic context. Maybe this is an issue. I would explain this to her, but, well... Look, it would just be too cruel to point out the realities of life to someone like her. Accordingly, the trifecta of the city council's refusal to avenge the defacing of a poster, the high rates of gendered violence that is totally cited in that report, and the presence of those hateful MRM assholes is enough to convince her that my city is a hotbed of hate against women. The MRM works insidiously to instill fear in women. During Edmonton's slut walk, a few of them showed up and carried around signs saying that rape culture was a myth. Naturally, you can see how a group of, what, 10 men carrying signs saying that there is no rape culture is meant to terrify a group of some, what, 3,000 women? Either these are the most easily killed women on the planet, or a single MRA is the most badass terrorist motherfucker who ever lived. And considering the appearance of some of them, I'm going with the former. She says that the very act of tearing down a misogynistic poster apparently terrifies her because she ostensibly thinks that some MRA is just hanging around in an unmarked surveillance van waiting to black bag her the instant she sticks her head out of the house. So just to recap here, the MRM has apparently turned Edmonton into a cesspool of misogyny by putting up posters and disagreeing with feminists. Fucking hell. I wonder, feminist, seriously, do you actually realize that this is the point that you've devolved to? You've gone so far up the crazy tree while hitting your heads on every single fucking branch that even the slightest hint that not everyone might think that you're correct is enough to have you losing your shits and going into bouts of fear-induced apoplexy. How can you claim to be empowering women when even posters make you quake in high heels? If the MRM ever figures out how to make buttons, you're just fucked. They ever think of putting up banners, and I imagine you'll be running for the hills and building underground bunkers. You know, if this makes us the worst city for women to live in, I'm cool with that. If feminists hate it, then it's most likely a good thing. And besides, I'm just as happy getting people like, this, like these out of here anyways. So, MRAs. Time to step up your game. Have a big sale to raise, to raise awareness for men's issues, and within a week or so, we can make Edmonton the worst on the planet. I have the utmost confidence in you. Later, bitches.